Hello, I'm David Hughes. Welcome to Your Perfect Body, the podcast of the Esoteric Teaching Community. Today's selection is an essay entitled Eternal Persons, Part 3. The first important spiritual truth given in Bhagavad Gita is that the living entity is an eternal individual spirit soul. Everything else is based on this. Natveva ham jatu nasham natvang neme janadhipaha nachaiva nabhavishyama sarvevaya mataparam. Never was there a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor all these kings, nor in the future shall any of us cease to be. Bhagavad Gita 2.12 Krishna, God, is eternal, original, and unlimited. Advaitam achutam anadim anantarupam adyam purana purusham navayovanam cha vedeshu durlabham adurlabham atma bhaktau govindam adi purusham tamahang bhajami I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord, who is inaccessible to the Vedas, but obtainable by pure, unalloyed devotion of the soul, who is unique, without a second, who is not subject to decay, is without a beginning, whose form is endless, who is the beginning and the eternal Purusha. Yet, he is a person possessing the beauty of blooming youth. Brahma Samhita 533 Purana Purusham means the oldest person, because Krishna is the original person, therefore he is also Purana, the oldest. He is even older than Brahma, because Brahma is given birth by Krishna. Therefore Krishna has been addressed in the Bhagavad Gita as Prapitamaha, Prajapati Strang Prapitamahascha. You are the first progenitor, and you are the great grandfather. Bhagavad Gita 1139. Brahma is called Pitamaha, the grandfather, and Prapitamaha means the father of the grandfather. So Krishna has been addressed as Prapitamaha, the father of Brahma. Therefore he is Adi Purusha, the first person. Lord Brahma is the original person within this creation, because he was first born. Then there was no other being before him. But he's given birth by Narayan, from the abdomen of Narayan in a lotus flower. Narayan, or Krishna, is Prapitamaha, the father of Brahma, and Adi Purusha, the first person. Krishna is the first person, and all other individual persons are descended from him. Therefore, Bhagavad Gita nullifies the Mayavadi philosophy, because it is said, Na jayate mriyate va kadachin, na yang bhutva bhavita na bhuyaha. Ajo nitya sasvato yang purano, na hanyate hanyamane sharire. For the soul there is never birth or death, nor having once been does he ever cease to be. He is unborn, eternal, ever existing, undying, and primeval. He is not slain when the body is slain. Bhagavad Gita 2.20 Mayavadi philosophy says that the living entity is originally one with God, but has become individual on account of illusion. But Krishna is the original eternal person from whom all other persons come, and he says, Mavaivangsho jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatanaha. The conditioned living entities in this material world are my eternal fragmental parts. Bhagavad Gita 15.7 
Mamai Vangsho is a compound word of Mama plus Eva plus Angsha. Mama means mine, Eva means certainly, and Angsha means parts. Certainly, they are my parts. That Angsha, part and parcel of God, is an individual, Sanatana, eternally. It is not that because of illusion he's only thinking I am separated. He really is a separate individual always, Sanatana. Mamai Vangsho Jiva Loke, Jiva Bhuta Sanatana. That is the statement of the Vedas. Last time we quoted the Upanishadic shloka, Nityo Nityanam, Chaitanash Chaitananam. Although the living entity is a separate individual, he is similar in quality with the Lord. But his individuality, that he is a separated fragment of Krishna, is sanatana, or eternal. It is not that by maya, or illusion, that we only seem fragmental or separated, we really are eternal individuals. And so it is not true that when we are liberated, we merge into the body or the effulgence of God. We are separate individuals in perpetuity. In the Varaha Purana, the living entity is called Vibhinangsha, the separated part and parcel. So we should understand very clearly that although we are eternal part and parcels of Krishna, we are eternally separate individuals. Mayantatam idang sarvam jagad avyakta murtina matstani sarva bhutani nachahum teshvavashtitaha. By me, in my unmanifested form, this entire universe is pervaded. All beings are in me, but I am not in them. Bhagavad Gita 9.4 So everything is existing within Krishna, but still, Krishna is not identical with the living entity. According to Krishna's statements in Bhagavad Gita and other Vedic scriptures, both Krishna and the living entities are eternal individuals. But at present, we are in illusion because we are thinking that I am this body. Otherwise, why is there so much fighting and suffering in the world? Everyone is thinking, I am this body. The material bodily concept of life is maya, illusion or ignorance. So the real illusion is that we think we are the body instead of thinking that we are the soul within the body. The process of the esoteric teaching is to drive away this covering of ignorance so that our natural spiritual knowledge is revealed. Om Jnana Timirandhasya Jnanang Jana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militang Jena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. I was born in the darkest ignorance, and my spiritual master opened my eyes with the torch of knowledge. I offer my respectful obeisances unto him. Shri Guru Pranam, a traditional Vaishnava prayer. Every one of us is covered by the darkness of Ajnana, the ignorance. What is that Ajnana? I am this body. I am American. I am Indian, I am a man, I am a woman, I am this, I am that. So there is fighting due to Ajnana. First of all, we have to drive away this Ajnana. Therefore, Krishna is teaching Arjuna that you are not this body, you are a spirit soul, you're eternal, you never die. So this is the first spiritual instruction, that you are not this body, you are an eternal person a spirit soul. That dust of ignorance is removed by chanting your mantra, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. It is the medicine recommended in the esoteric teaching to clean the ignorance of material consciousness from the soul. Then he can understand that I am not this body, I am a spirit soul, part and parcel of Krishna. Therefore my duty is to serve Krishna. So by following the process of the esoteric teaching, we become enlightened gradually. The external form of the material body is different from the consciousness within, or the soul. Just like you are now covered with some type of clothing. So if you change your clothes, does it mean that you are a different person? Your body is dressed in a certain type of covering, 
So if you change the covering, does it mean that you've become someone else? Of course not. Similarly, this material body is like clothing for the soul. So if I change my clothes, that does not mean that I am a different person. Suppose I am now a human being, and then I change my body to become a demigod, or I change my body to become a dog. It does not mean that I am finished. I'm still the same person. I have simply changed my dress, changed my clothes according to my karma. Sri Bhagavan Uvacha Karmana Daivane Trena Chantur Deho Papataye Striya Pravishta Udaram Pungshore Kanashraya. The personality of Godhead said, 